Hey guys, it is Adrian for ProductionCrate.com. Today, if you can spare a minute, I would like to teach you how to do that Marvel style intro that you just saw in the intro. <laughs> We're gonna be making this effect using Element 3D, which is a third party plugin, which you can get from videocopilot.net. None of it's gonna be hard, but I think to make it easy to explain, what we should do is split it up into stages. Stage one is going to be to make the animated comic texture. So for that, you're gonna need a bunch of comic images. You can get them online, scan some comics, draw them, whatever. I made these out of screenshots of past tutorials. Leave a comment below and tell me how many you recognize. So I'll just grab all of those and move them into a new composition. Make sure the composition is long enough. This is gonna be really easy. I'm gonna handle all of these at once. Highlight all of them and hit P for position and hit page down three times. So now we're on the third frame and click to set the stopwatch and then move back to the beginning and just grab all of them at once and just move them off screen to the top and then go ahead and highlight all of the last keyframes and just hit F9 to easy ease those but don't easy ease the first one just the last one and then come forward to that last keyframe and hit page down one more time so now we're on the frame that is beyond the last keyframe and if you hit alt and the closing bracket we'll be able to trim the layer to this point now unselect them go down to the the bottom one select that one and then scroll up holding shift and select the top one so now you have all of these selected but in order from last to first and then just right click on those layers come up to keyframe assistant and click sequence layers and now these layers are going to be sequenced starting with the bottom one and moving on to the top and now we have these blank spaces to deal with so just with all the layers selected grab the end point of one of the layers and pull it out a few frames so now there's no blank spaces until the end so now we can come to the end and just trim our composition there. And then if we just activate the motion blur for all the layers and for the comp, now we're going to have an animated flipping comic book texture. And if you wanna skip this step and just use the texture that I've prepared here, it is on footage crate, but it's hidden. It's not in any of the categories. Just go to footage crate and do a search for Marvel title and it'll pop up and you could just download it and continue following the rest of the tutorial. Stage two, we're just gonna set up our geometry and camera. So first type out whatever word you want to use. Generally, you'd go with Marvel, but I'm going to go with Crate. Make a new solid with Element 3D applied and add the text as a custom layer. In the Element panel, hit Extrude and your text will turn into a 3D model and you'll also want to add something to intersect with it. I'm using a box, but you could just use a plane as well. Tweak your settings until you're happy and then exit out of this and in After Effects, add a new camera. Add a new null object, and I'm gonna call this the POI, which is gonna stand for point of interest. And I'll link the point of interest on the camera to the null, so this way, no matter where I move the camera, it stays focused on the null, which is in the very center of my scene. And that is how we are gonna make this animation work. So the ending position of my camera is actually going to be where the camera already is. So I'm gonna set that keyframe first. Now I'm gonna move forward to the beginning and I'm gonna be utilizing these custom views, the front, uh, left, top, back views to help get my animation right. So I know that I want the beginning of my composition. I wanna have my camera right here next to the C looking at the word this way. So if I go to my top view, I can grab my camera and move it forward and then move it over so it's next to the C. And you'll see as I move it, the camera starts to pivot and that's because it's focusing on that null, which is great, exactly what I want. So I'll move it there, but my rotation is probably gonna be not quite correct. I'll just change my Z rotation by 90 degrees. So now I'm looking at that the way that I want. And if I just play through this, you can see what's happening. So it looks like everything is working the way I want it to, but the animation is not the way I want it. So I need to go through and add more keyframes to the position and the Z rotation of the camera in order to get the animation that I actually want. This is gonna take some time, just play with it until it looks right, but try to make sure that the arcs of your camera move are pleasing to the eye, because if the arcs look good, then the camera move is going to look smooth. And then make sure to ease your keyframes as well. For stage three, make a few duplicates of this main composition because we're going to need a few different versions of it moving forward. 
On this first one, bring the animated comic book texture we made before into the composition and add it as a custom texture layer. If your animated comic texture does not last for the entire length of your composition, just right click on it in the project panel and click interpret footage main and then here at the bottom where it says loop, you can type any number you want and then it will loop that amount of times thus making the footage much longer. So now let's go into the element panel and we can pretty much leave these textures at their default settings. All we need to do is add the custom layer as the diffuse and that should be good. You can change the other settings if you want to but I don't think it's necessary. If the mapping does not look right then just make sure that you have box reserve aspect ratio selected and then you can change the UV peak to whatever you want to make the texture more dense or more sparse. The trick to making sure that the texture lines up in the beginning part when the camera is sideways and zoomed in on the C is that I have an extra little plane hidden right here for the camera to zoom up on. I have it turned sideways and I have the texture just mapped onto it once and then as the camera starts to pan away it'll pan away from that and, and start to look at the other parts of the composition and from out here you can't see it anymore. But there it is. It's just hidden right there and it is our little secret. And then just go ahead and add in whatever lights you want. You can turn on the ambient occlusion, you can turn on the shadows. All of that is just up to your personal taste. For the second version, go into the scene setup and all we need to do on the box model is add the red paint preset. You can actually make that whatever color you want. And then on the text, I like to add some kind of metal texture to it. Something that's not colorful but has a little bit of detail on it so it still looks good. It's not just going to be boring white or anything like that. For the third one, you want it exactly the same as the second, but here's where you'll add your second word. So if you're doing Marvel, you would add the word studios below the word Marvel. But for me, I'm not doing that. I'm doing production crate. So I added the word production over the word crate. And I have that as a separate object in a separate group, but with the same texture. And then for the fourth and final composition, going back into the scene setup, I'm going to be using the flat color preset on everything. So I'll add the flat color preset to my background, but I'll change the diffuse color to red. And then on my text, I'll also add the flat color preset but change the color to white and that'll give us our nice flat two separate tones red and white. For the fourth and final phase we just need to composite all of those together so bring all four of those composites we made into one composition and here's what we're gonna do. So I have my first one here with my comic book texture and as my camera starts to swing around I'll turn on my next layer but bring the opacity of it to zero and over time as my camera starts to swing around and pull out I will turn that back up to 100 so now my composition is slowly starting to change into this red and silver color and I'm really gonna make that a long fade I don't want to draw very much attention to it at all unlike this next one when my camera starts to pull all the way out and really start to settle I will turn on my next layer with my word production on it and I'm gonna bring this one in with an animated mask so let me just draw a mask before the word production starts now that word has disappeared and I'll set a keyframe on my mask path and then go forward a little bit and just animate that mask to bring it on. I'll obscure that transition with a lens flare. I used optical flares in mine, but if you don't have it, you can just use the built-in lens flare. Just don't use it on its default. Change it to one of these other ones. And then also keyframe the brightness so it starts at zero and then kind of comes on. I'll set it to 120. Add another keyframe of 120 and set it back to zero and allow your brightness keyframes and your position keyframes to overlap a little bit and that way it will look a little bit less stale. And and then finally, you can start this before the lens flare goes away, but turn on your last layer with just the solid red and white and just fade that on at the very end. If you're curious about the music that I use, it's a shortened version of Triumphic. If you look on Sounds Crate, look in the Epic category and you will find it in there. All right, that's it. If you found this educational or enjoyable, you might want to subscribe to the channel and you can make sure to sign yourself up for notifications by ringing the bell. So go ahead and do that to make sure that you're getting as much as possible out of this channel. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay creative, make it awesome. Bye.